Good morning. morning. Anyone out there? Good morning. Well, it's morning somewhere in the world. I'm always very worried when somebody asks me to give a speech. Even more so when they ask me to give a keynote speech. Why am I worried, I hear you say. Surely you must have done this a thousand times. And after all, you speak on television to millions of people every day. That is true. The only problem is, on television, you can't see him at the back blackberrying. You can't see her at the front snoozing. And you can't see everybody else who may be bored out their minds. On television, you broadcast into the abyss, and thank God for that. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I see that this is the business traveler, business travel junior day. Well, for somebody who's about to celebrate his 46th birthday next week, it's the nearest I'm ever gonna come to being a junior. I'm feeling young at heart before I've even spoken. But we do have something in common here today. I have to tell you, much as you may not like it, I have to tell you that we are all addicts. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, this could be a self-help group worthy of any Alcoholics Anonymous. We're only our drug of choice doesn't go up the nostrils and we don't smoke it. Well, this is Germany. No, instead, ladies and gentlemen, our drug of choice is travel. We get our kicks from getting on planes and going to parts of the world where hopefully other people haven't been. We get our highs from being truly high in the sky. 38,000, 12,000 meters, whatever you want to call it, up in the air. Knowing that at the other end of our journey, there is a destination waiting to be explored. That is why I agreed to come and speak today, because I think... There is no better, no greater, no more exciting moment than when you've boarded the plane and you hear those magic words, cabin crew, doors to automatic. It means we are on our way. We are going to some far-flung corner of the world to experience something new. At least, that's what I thought when I was your age. Let me go through the last seven days of my life. And that might put it into some perspective. And by the way, I will pause at some point for questions. And if at any point you've got a question, because I can't stand this fact that I'm standing up here, we've got three tables there, and you're over there. So if you have got a question at any point, shove your hand up, don't worry, it won't put me off. Unless it is you want to go to the toilet, in which case just leave at your own free will. Um, Last Thursday, I left London, where I live, and I headed to Boston. Unfortunately, I had to change planes in Washington, Dulles. I don't know whether any of you have ever changed planes at IAD, but the only thing you're pretty much certain of is that you won't make your connection. So instead of making my 6 o'clock connection, I made the 9 o'clock connection, which got me into Boston at about midnight. I then had a day's filming in Boston, and I should have been out of Boston at at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but of course the filming went long, the plane was late, the weather was bad, I ended up staying overnight in Boston. By now I'm running late. Seriously late. Saturday morning, get on the plane, 0600. It's Boston to Los Angeles. Get to Los Angeles. My bag had come off the plane in Los Angeles with me, but for some reason best known to themselves, the airline had decided to put it back on another plane. And my bag went back to Orlando. 
I'm now wearing the same underwear, which I've worn for two days. The socks are only one day old, so I'm not too smelly. I then film in Los Angeles all day Saturday, all day Sunday. My bag turns up Sunday night, just in time for the hotel to be having renovations and reconstruction, which means that the air conditioning isn't working until it starts working at 2 o'clock in the morning when it blows up, and I lose a night's sleep. Monday night, I film all day Monday. I leave Los Angeles on Monday night. Having lost a night's sleep, I get into Washington again on Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, I then fly Washington to London. I overnight in London, and I get the first flight out this morning from London to Berlin. The plane's supposed to leave at 7. We finally get into the air at 8. I arrive here at about 11. Now, who would like to do that for a week? Hands up. Anybody want to substitute? You want to substitute, sir? Sorry? Interesting. Are you mad? <laughs> so tell me, what is interesting and exciting about a lost bag, dirty underwear, smelly socks, a lost night's sleep in a hotel where, frankly, the air conditioning never really worked? Uh, you're right, of course. It's interesting and it's exciting. And that's why we do it. From here, on Friday. Is it today is Wednesday, correct? So on Wednesday, so on Friday, I leave from here. I fly to Frankfurt. Frankfurt to Miami. Miami to Panama City. I'm in Panama City for one day before I then fly on my birthday, my 46th birthday. Cards and presents will be gratefully received. I then fly from Panama City to Miami, Miami to Dallas, Dallas to Los Angeles. I'm in Los Angeles for one day before I then fly from Los Angeles back to London. Anybody want to change places yet? Hands up. Anyone want to change places? And the only... Yes, sir. Question. Yes. Who does all the booking for you? The lady who does the booking for me is currently residing in a home where she sort of knits late, you know, and has to sort of count beads. No, she's, uh, very, well, I have a team of people who do the bookings, uh, that, because it's so complicated. Because it is truly the original sweater that if you snag it on a nail, let's see if the interpreter can get this one, if you, you know, it, it will unravel pretty fast. And it does unravel, and that's the beauty of what we do as traveling, as the road warriors of the world. That is the love, that is the drug, that is the magic that is our traveling life. And there is no doubt that in the 20 years that I've been doing this, maybe not as extreme as in the last week and, and for the next week, last year I totted up 360,000 miles. That's about 15 to 20 times around the world. Um, and, every, and I can't say I enjoyed every moment of it, but I wouldn't have missed most of it for anything. Because what we are involved in is probably the most interesting and exciting industry in the world. There is a magic and there is a romance to that which we do, which is quite indescribable. Whether it is wanderlust and a wish to see new destinations, whether it is just to say, I have been there and you haven't, who knows? But there is no doubt that as business travellers, we enjoy a life that is privileged and one which we fight desperately to keep. You're laughing, sir. And you, you're laughing, but it's true. I agree with you. It reminds me of when we all started in this business. We wanted to see the world. And we wanted to see it at somebody else's expense. And that, and you know what they say? Be careful what you wish for. You might just end up being lumbered with it. And that is indeed what has happened to those of us who are fortunate enough to travel as we do.
But there is no doubt, and I'm aware that I'm talking to travel professionals today, there is no doubt that our traveling life has got much harder in the last two to four years. Whether it is the enormous and the uh, security lines at airports, whether it is having to transfer at Hassel Heathrow in London with its bizarre one-bag rule, which was only recently uh, abolished. But even then, I'll give you one example, British airports. Heathrow, you can now take multiple bags. Go to Gatwick and you're still stuck with one bag. Or whether it is transferring at a US airport. How many of you have transferred at US airports in here? Hands up if you've had the misfortune to travel, to, trans, to transit through a US airport. How many of you would do almost anything to avoid transiting at a US airport? Good example, Air New Zealand, uh, 18 months ago, started its new flight from Auckland to London. It's rather clever. I mean, Auckland, and Lo there's Auckland, there's London. Now, they've always gone with the NZ2 that way via Los Angeles. Two years ago, they stole, 18 months ago, they started a flight that went from Auckland via Hong Kong to London. Doesn't matter which way around the world you go, it's equidistant for them. And what they tell me now is that more passengers want to go via Hong Kong because they don't have the misery of going via the US airports. And I can tell you, as somebody who has got to transit in Miami on Friday afternoon, there is only one thing of which I am certain, and that is I will miss my connecting flight. It, it, it will not happen. I've got a three-hour connection in Miami, and I, I, well, read my blog online, and I promise you, I, I, I almost certainly will miss that connection. But even so, I shall travel in good heart. I shall travel with a smile on my face. I said that our industry and our traveling life is getting harder. Security is one reason at airports. It is necessary, it is desirable, but it is a hassle. The second reason is rising prices. It is so much more expensive now to put a body on the road. Let me give you one example. Last night, I, even though I live in London, it was too much hassle to go home. I stayed overnight at the airport. One night in a miserable airport hotel. One night, not including breakfast and not including, I better just cover up the name of the hotel. Not including breakfast and not including internet access. And the price, £170. Pounds! $340 to stay in a miserable airport hotel in London. I spent the roughly the same amount of money, $340, to stay in a five-star hotel in Boston the previous week. So it is more expensive. The ticket here, the one-way cheapy ticket, from London to Berlin, about £300. The round-trip ticket, from London to Los Angeles, London to LA, uh, in pounds. Anybody like to have a guess of what it, well, let's say London to New York. Anybody like to have a, a, a guess what that might cost these days in business class, a premium class, in pounds? Sorry? 500 pounds? 500 pounds. Well, um, that might do for the luggage. Come on, anybody, anybody would like to have an educated guess what the... £2,000. Are, are you asking me? Do you, do, are you speaking from knowledge? £2,000 to fly business class from London to New York round trip. £2,000. You always 
first goal with first class energy. No, at first class. Have, have you been drinking? I know it's Germany, but really. <laughs> I can tell you, go into your GDSs. The business class unrestricted fare between London and New York is about £4,000. £4,000. Now, admittedly, most of us don't pay anything like that because we have deals with people like your good selves. Um, but even so, that's the sort of price that it costs to put a body on the road. Factor in then, um, which is one reason why, to answer your point, we are so delighted that Open Skies is coming into force at the end of this month, when in one day alone, into Heathrow, three new US carriers are going to have rights. The Heathrow Four have been blown out the water and not a moment before time. Northwest Continental, Northwest Continental and Delta are now all going to fly into Heathrow. You have all, sorry? Hmm? Well, maybe. The deal's on the rocks because of pilots. Truculent, not the pilots. Always difficult pilots. Um, where did I put my notes? I must have had them somewhere. Anyway, so, putting people on the road is an expensive business. We estimate that when we're doing a filming trip somewhere, to put three people, a correspondent, a producer, and a cameraman on the road for a week, you're not going to get much change from twenty to $20,000. That's how much with flights, hotels, excess baggage. Excess baggage! Who's ever had to pay excess baggage in here? What's your biggest excess baggage bill? Ah, $300. <laughs> Wasn't a lot of luggage either. Anyone else had to pay excess baggage? To prove my point, you're right, $300. It's short flights. And if you look at the United States, only yesterday, US Airways announced it's going to charge $25 for you to check in a second bag. It doesn't matter, you know, what's in the bag. British Airways, with its abomination of a restriction on checked-in baggage, which is going to charge some offensive amount for you to check in. Ryanair! Who's ever flown Ryanair? Oh, yeah. Are you sure we've got any business travellers in here? Ryanair, who's flown Ryanair? Who's actually enjoyed flying Ryanair? <laughs> I had to pay five pounds extra to check in a bag on EasyJet. So why do we do it? Why do we all still want to travel? What is it about travelling that we find so enticing? I'll tell you what it is. It is the romance of travel. It is the aspirational aspect of it. It is the idea that, yes, madam, you may be in seat 29F this week, but in five years' time, you might have moved up to 14B. And in a few years after that, You might even be in one C. We want to travel. I saw, this, I saw the new Singapore Airlines suites that are on the A380. If there was ever something that more than anything else reminded me of why we travel, it was those first class suites. Admittedly, from Singapore to Sydney will cost you the best part of $10,000 US. How many people in here would like to experience that just once? Come on. How many people would like to experience it? All right, let me, what have we got in here? All right, I'll ask another question. How many of you would rather go on Ryanair than Singapore Airlines first class suites? We have one person, I'll buy you a ticket on Ryanair. <laughs> the truth is, what we are all looking for is that experience of the backpacker. We remember what it was like when we traveled without cares in the world, where our only concern was 
Which beach would we flop down on at the end of the day? The flip-flops, the backpacking. I only ever did it once, by the way, for my 30th birthday. I thought I'd try it out. A miserable experience. Miserable. I discovered I wasn't cut out for it. But we still travel the world looking for that moment of escape and that moment of freedom. And I think that the only difference between then and now is that we want the ability to switch it on and switch it off. We want to be the backpacker without a care in the world. But we want a five-star hut on the beach when it's time to rest our head at night. We want to be with the backpackers and enjoy their camaraderie and their joie de vie. But we want to make sure they're on the outside of the hotel <laughs> and not cluttering up the nice restaurant when it's time for dinner. Ladies and gentlemen, you can cut this any which way you like over the next few days. But I urge you to remember, you are drug addicts and you are addicted to something far more powerful than anything that might be outlawed by government. You are addicted to getting on planes and going around the world and seeing what life has to offer in the most imaginative places on this planet. And for you, the most exciting words in the world will always be, as they are for me, cabin crew, doors to automatic. Because that means you're on your way. I hope your discussions are fruitful. Thank you. Do you want to moderate yourself or shall I? Uh, oh, uh, shall I do a question and answer thing? Want to do it yourself or shall? I think you can do it. Yeah. Oh, any questions? Sorry, any questions? Tell me who you are and how long you've been. I tell you what, tell me who you are, how long you've been traveling. How about that? I'm born in the Black Forest. Learned well, we won't hold that against you. Learn my English in, in England, still trying. Um, I'm 40 years on the road, 10 countries. I'm a chef and now I'm a hotelier. I'm 16 years in Korea, managing hotels, including the Hilton Hotel. I hope the London airport one was not the Hilton. Uh, and uh, I just would like to ask you simply, you are our guru. You bring us together, not traveling. You're the most courageous man, but I'm not here to give you compliments. Simply oh, please do. Please asking do. you more a and question. More. I'm happy for that. Your courage, if people, leaders in this country, in the world, would have that courage as you have to travel and sacrifice, we will be in a better and peaceful world. But I have a question. Yes. When was the last time you have been in Korea? Number two, when he, when, what was your experience? Is Korea important? As you know, Korea has had the soccer, soccer, soccer team uh, World Cup 2002, Olympics 88, the, the Yosu uh, Expo is coming up, uh, soon unification is coming. Uh, when are you coming back to Korea and is Korea important for you? All right, first of all, I've never been to Korea. <laughs> so that answers that. Uh, you know, wherever I go in the world, the first, pe the first question people always say to me is, oh, when were you last in? And then when I have to admit that I haven't been there, they say, why not and when are you coming? Uh, it's a big world. I would say there are five countries in the world that have to be visited by me in the next 12 to 18 months, of which Korea is absolutely. Um, Korea, you're, you're all going to want to know the rest of them, aren't you? Um, for example, do you know, I'd never been to Egypt until December. Never been, don't know why. These things happen. Never been to Egypt. I've been to Iceland, and I've been to uh, Finland, and I've been to Romania. Goodness knows how many times. I'd, ne I'd never been to... Egypt, until December, and then I went twice in a month. So the answer to your question, Korea is up there, and it will happen in the next 12 months. Um, any other questions? Come on. Go on. I thought you were going home. My name is Giancarlo Darcento. I'm with Continental Airlines. Ah, one airline can make a difference. 
Work hard, fly right. Do you know, your, you had a, your airline had an advert in yesterday's New York Times that really put the boot into the balls of the idea of um, teleconferencing. I was going to bring it with me uh, to, to this conference because it was really does, it really does, you, you, you guys have epitomized the, the, what can be done with, I mean, admittedly, you need to have flatbeds in business class. Your We're working on that. 787. Your, your product's a little bit ropey at the moment. Um, but your Newark hub is brilliant. The global gateway, I think you call it. Anyway, the question. Thank you. I, I've been on the road for uh, 20 years. Uh, I've lived in a few different countries. I've visited uh, close to, to 40 uh, countries worldwide. Um, my question is, hotel-wise, what, what to you makes a, a good, solid hotel? Right. Very simple. It's very simple. What are you staying in a hotel for? And in fact, this month, CNN Business Traveller is looking at exactly that issue of different types of hotels and style. But fundamentally, what is the single most important thing that you look for a hotel? Hmm? Okay, location. We can live with that. Location. We have a location from this lady over here. What is the one thing you want from that hotel? Relax. Yes. Yes. I don't care if the soaps has got some fifi foo foo name. I don't give a damn what else, what the lobby looks like. I want a good night's sleep. That, beyond anything else, is the number one goal of a hotel. Everything else is trimmings. So that is the answer. I want a good night's sleep. The, um, who gives a good night's sleep? All hotels will give you a comfortable bed at a particular level. All hotels will give you a particular... Uh, uh, the, the Western Heavenly bed is probably amongst the best in the world. Intercons beds are superb. Uh, Hyatt's are excellent. And then after that you start getting into does the hotel say something about me? Do I want to stay at Hyatt's New Andaz, whatever that means, in, in London? Do I want to stay at a W Hotel? Who's ever stayed at a W Hotel? Anyone ever stayed at a W Hotel? I nearly killed myself walking down the co corridor. It was so dark. Who wants to stay in a hotel? I remember the Schrager Hotels in the 1980s and 90s. Anyone ever stay at the Schrager Hotels? The Paramount, the Royalton, the Hudson, the Sanderson. They were all so pretentious. I stayed at the Paramount one night. Didn't get a good night's sleep because of the party in the room next door. Now, you might say what a sad git I am that I wasn't having my own party in my own room. But that's the answer, a good night's sleep. And, and any hotelier that doesn't remember that's the principal goal, don't stay at their hotel. Don't worry about the shampoos. You can always wash your hair with soap. Well, in your, any other, anything else? Yes, yes, ma'am. Speak up, dear, speak up. We can't all... Right? Right, where do I get my restaurant guides from? Well, the internet, even. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I, I'm remarkably unadventurous when it comes to traveling in terms of where I go. Uh, you know, I have colleagues, I'm sure you've all got similar colleagues, that the moment they go to a new country, they go, they go native. If the local delicacy is boiled jellied testicles, they'll eat it. Whatever is the local delicacy, they feel the need to, you know, they'll suddenly dress like the locals. And you look at them and you think, what the hell are you doing? And you've gone mad. Um, if I'm filming, then I really can't afford to have a bad stomach. 
if you've got half a dozen people all dependent upon you turning up in the morning. It's like this morning. You know, I'm not going to suddenly go and have a bratwurst at the railway station, uh, no matter how good somebody says it is. Because if I suddenly can't, excuse me, you know, then the purpose of my visit has failed. After that, I will then take advice from local people where the decent restaurants are. Uh, I was in New York last week, a great new restaurant uh, called Danube. Uh, not old, new, it's a great restaurant called Danube. I'd never been to it. I lived there for 10 years. Danube. Yes, like the river. Wonderful restaurant. Wonderful. It's Austrian. I'd never really thought of Austrian as being sort of... Actually, I better be careful what I'm saying here. <laughs> but I, I was really surprised. I mean, no, I mean, I wasn't surprised. Well, you know what I mean. It was a great restaurant. Uh, if you want my best restaurants in New York, Gotham Bar and Grill. You can't beat it. Wonderful food every time. Hard to get a table, but always superb food. Uh, Los Angeles, I always stayed at a little boutique hotel called La Park Suites. And I stay there because you get a suite for the price of a room. Uh, 